Hey guys, Tyler here. So the story of human evolution is a long and complex one, and it's ever-changing with new discoveries. One of the frequent debates in evolutionary circles, at least in my experience, is whether or not humans have stopped evolving. Even after our species first branched off from our primate ancestors about 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens has undergone many changes to get to where we are today. We invented better tools to aid our survival, developed new cultural practices that distinguished us from prior hominids, and adapted to environments we'd never set foot in before. But with all of our modern technology and civilization, there's still a legitimate question as to how much natural selection still affects us. Did we stop evolving when we invented hospitals? Or is that too reductive? In this video, I attempt to tackle this and other questions about the nature of modern human evolution. With that, let's dive in. First things first, it's important to establish some context. While humans are said to have reached behavioral modernity tens of thousands of years ago, there's more to recent and ongoing human evolution than may be initially evident. Humans are social creatures, and so culturally, we have without a doubt continued to evolve. Access to higher education, the advent of effective contraception, and changing social norms mean that various populations are reproducing later in life than they did in the past. But such cultural evolution need not work counter to natural selection. In tandem with the average age of mothers and fathers increasing, menopause is evolving to occur later. And this is just one example of genetic changes we've experienced over the past few millennia. Fewer humans today, for instance, are lactose intolerant than before we domesticated cows. Indeed, the invention of agriculture, beginning of urbanization, and onset of industrialization have all been linked with an acceleration in our evolution, resulting in much higher genetic diversity than our prehistoric past. Superficial characteristics like afro-textured hair and the evolution of light skin and blonde hair have been attributed to differences in climate. Tibetans have evolved over the past three millennia to possess adaptations to high altitudes provided by the gene EPAS1. Additionally, we're developing immunity to more and more infectious diseases like malaria, though it's still the largest cause of death annually in humans. So between these still extant selective pressures and genetic drift, clearly the answer to the question in the title of this video is, no, we have not stopped evolving. But some questions still remain. How much has technology affected the course of our evolution? And how far do we still have left to go? While some of these questions may remain unanswerable within our lifetimes, I didn't want to end this video without getting some input from people who study this in more detail than I do. So I asked a couple professors that I interviewed for my documentary about transhumanism, teched out, about their feelings on the subject of whether humans have stopped evolving. Evolution comes from selection and, and natural, like Darwin's theory says, and, and, and so it's just different what's being selected, and so what we're evolving into may be changing. Uh, because, you know, uh, of course, uh, things that were deadly diseases, uh, you know, are now uh, 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 perfectly treatable and not particularly even harmful sometimes uh, after you get the treatment. And so, you know, it changes the, the, the success of, of different people. And, and of course, also, too, whether it's education or other government programs, uh, they all change, you know, who's going to be passing their genes on. Uh, and so, uh, it's really a complicated question. I mean, of course, and then you can ask the evolution in, in a larger sense, are we changing? And, if, and I, I mean, I think the answer to that is kind of obvious, of course. If you look at the differences of opinion between Gen Xers, millennials, and baby boomers, and uh, older generations, uh, they're quite large right now in our society. Uh, you know, when you ask on various social issues or political candidates, you're going to see widely disparate sort of, of, of things. So we're definitely evolving socially. Uh, the question is, of course, with climate change and everything, will that happen soon enough? Or, or will we, you know, be living in some sort of Mad Max hellscape uh, because uh, we don't do that quickly enough? Yeah. 
Well, biologically, for instance, you can make an argument that we don't need to regulate our body temperature anymore because we live in all those uh, climate-controlled environments. I spend a very small amount of time outside, I mean, during the typical workday, like, from my house, which is climatized, go into my car, which has AC, and come here, which is also, con the te temperature is maintained at this almost ideal, <laughs> in this ideal range. So my body doesn't need to regulate my temperature anymore. So it's not, I'm, I'm not moving from one environment where it's too cold to one where it's too hot. And uh, so my body needs to you know, adapt to that. So my body doesn't need, uh, uh, in that sense, temperature uh, regulation. I mean, those who are, have better temperature regulation, they don't have an advantage. So they will not be selected by natural selection to you know, uh, 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 go further. Cognitively, yeah, I think we are also changing cognitively. If we don't have to memorize facts, so those uh, uh, with uh, strong uh, memory abilities um, may not have an, an evolutional advantage. So moving into kind of that future time scale, when it comes to people integrating themselves with technology through implants or whatever, um, do you think there's a limit to how far we should go? And also, um, is there a point where we stop being human and become something else? Well, really, even right now, you can make an argument that we are not pure humans anymore, right? And uh, I mean, we are going to navigate between what we call, let's say, the real world to an augmented reality. To a virtual world, and probably, uh, for instance, I see my kids uh, uh, during their free time. I think 50% of the time they are in some kind of virtual uh, uh, world. Um, and yeah, some uh, 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 people in the future might prefer to spend most of their time in some kind of virtual world, some in some kind of augmented reality uh, 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 world, and some in the real world. <laughs> um, um, so in that sense, um, yeah, we, we are not humans, some pure humans anymore in that sense. We, we are enhanced by all sorts of devices uh, that augment our cognition, our, our, our uh, physical abilities. How far we should go? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, uh, of course, there are dangers if you push something to the extreme. Um, and um, well, I just remember that movie, uh, uh, Ex Machina. Or have you seen that one? Um, yeah. yeah. So in that sense, if you develop this kind of you know, uh, uh, intelligence or uh, uh, humanity that not only has you know, some kind of reasoning intelligence, but also some uh, emotional intelligence, it could become very you know, <laughs> scary. <laughs> the outcomes could be very scary. Uh, um, so yeah, we need to control uh, how far we want to go. To uh, with the technology and there, 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 there should be some regulations in the future. So do you, do you think that technology in general is kind of like a great equalizer? Uh, because that's that's one aspect that Dr. Roos brought up. He thinks that it's not necessarily changing our biology as much as it is kind of giving us access to information and, and helping us kind of compete. Yeah, but do we have the same access? I mean, here, you know, if you get into the University of Memphis, your access becomes pretty good. But in the surrounding community, uh, in the surrounding community, uh, I'm not sure that the access is that great always. And and people have to seek it too uh, before it even matters whether they have access. I mean, it it does have some effects on those uh, metrics, but the, it all has to do with this uh, 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 sort of ethic in our political structures right now which tries to minimize the cost of education. Uh, and until we start feeding more money into education, uh, I, I don't think that it's going to um, have a revolutionary effect. It's enabling, but it, it's, it, you need more. You need, you need political will. Uh, you need social will. You need people to uh, want to be educated. And in a lot of cases, we don't have that. And so that, that's where my pessimism would come in, uh, not in the potential of technology, but then the potential of people to use technology appropriately. Will it, will it change how we classify ourselves as a species? Well, we'll have to define what's a human in the future. So are we humans with you know, Google Maps in our pocket and uh, uh, with calculators in our pockets uh, and with the, the, with the ability to, uh, to talk to someone on the other side of the world instantly. So yeah, I mean, we are still humans. We just have those tools, uh, those powerful tools. And so in that sense, yeah, we are still humans. But uh, uh, but again, compared to 
what a human was hundred or thousand years ago, uh, we have superpowers in, in that sense, right? Uh, yeah, you can talk with someone uh, on the other side of the world instantly. Can you do that? Go, could you have done that thousand years ago? And no. So, uh, I mean, are we smarter than those people? Uh, well, it also depends what you mean by smart. If, if solving problems or more complex problems uh, means smarter, I think, yeah, we are smarter now than uh, 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 a thousand years ago because we can solve more uh, complex problems, yeah, like we can go to the moon. How far again we can go? Uh, there will be some individual choices. As I said, I think some people will prefer to live most of the time in, in a virtual world. Um, but also there should be some regulations how far you can go with uh, how virtual you want to be <laughs> and how, what kind of power you want to have with all those uh, prosthetics that can yeah, make you some kind of superhuman. Uh. Do, you, do you think that technology is ever going to change our sense of individuality? Well, it, you know, uh, it, I think it is already uh, because we have so much uh, uh, so many more subgroups and exposure to alternative thought and opinion now with the internet in particular uh, than people used to have. Uh, and so that's making people feel connected in different ways. Maybe some people connected, feel more connected with the rest of the world. Other feel, people feel connected with their own little uh, Reddit group. Um, uh, uh, but that, I think, does change our sense of in individuality and in that, you know, that's involved with how we think about our connections with other people, too. Yeah, uh, so it, it's both good and bad there. As I alluded to in the beginning of this video, the study of human evolution is not as straightforward as some like to think. Whether we're talking about our path to sapience or the complexities of modern civilization, it's a tangled web of events and interconnected pressures that are hard to condense into a single answer. To the extent that we can gauge whether humans have stopped evolving, again, the short answer is no. But like I said, that is the short answer, the long answer is it's complicated. One thing we can say for sure is, while natural selection still does affect us, we're at a point in human history where various factors are starting to override natural selection. Perhaps one day we'll take natural selection entirely into our own hands, more so than we already have. But that's a story for another time. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss any future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time.